I've been captivated by Beethoven's music uh, since I was a boy. The music spoke to me then, speaks to me very directly, um, like probably no other composer. I've found that the better I get to know Beethoven as a person, and the more I know about him and the world in which he functioned, the more astonishing the music gets. And even when you think it couldn't be more astonishing, it actually becomes so because it becomes more human. So here we are in 2020, celebrating his 250th anniversary. I am very proud to say that the Oxford Philharmonic are spearheading the celebrations with probably the most comprehensive and wide-ranging festival anywhere in the UK. It really promises to be an incredible year. And the Oxford Philharmonic Orchestra, what are they going to be doing? All the symphonies all the piano concertos, and then we've got the chamber music, the piano sonatas, the violin sonatas, the cello sonatas. It really is going to be a year of immersing ourselves in what I believe is the greatest body of music ever composed. And question is if there's anything on such a scale as, as this festival is. <laughs> The 2020 Oxford Beethoven Festival runs throughout the year. It will cover all the symphonies, all the concertos, all the piano concertos, the violin concerto played by Anne-Sophie Mutter in December 2020. The triple concerto with soloists uh, Maxim Wengerov and Baba Jan and Misha Maisky. Many people may not be aware that uh, Oxford is twinned with Bonn, uh, which is of course Beethoven's uh, birthplace. We're working closely with the Beethoven House. I'm also very happy that we are hosting uh, a, a choir from Bonn to perform with us the Ninth Symphony. We will be giving a concert performance of Fidelio, which works beautifully in the intimacy of the Sheldonian Theatre. For the piano concertos, I will be directing the orchestra from the keyboard in the way that we play chamber music. Uh, and that's the sort of experience I want to put across. We're going to do all the piano sonatas uh, in 10 different recitals given by 10 different pianists, people like Andrew Schiff and Paul Lewis. <laughs> Also doing the uh, complete violin and cello sonatas played by our uh, wonderful principals of the orchestra. So when I had the chance to create this uh, sonata series, we focused on his sonatas, but then one realizes, well, he's living in this city where so much more than Beethoven was going on. I mean, he was the center figure who has these quite formidable musicians around him. They're not on his level. He probably knew it too, but he respected a lot of them. It's good to have the knowledge, all this, all this talent that was surrounding him. We've got Martha Argerich and Steven Kovacevic doing the Grosse Fuge in a special arrangement by the composer for two pianos. We have a special evening of a reading of T.S. Eliot's four quartets recited by uh, Jeremy Irons. <laughs> Based in Oxford, of course, we are conscious of the importance academia plays in the culture of the city. And we've organized a very special symposium of some of the world's leading scholars on Beethoven who will converge on Oxford to give their latest research on the composer. And we have planned a two-day 
study weekend. We have Alfred Brendel, who is also the, the honorary patron of the festival, giving a masterclass and also talking about his experiences in playing Beethoven uh, in probably the most illustrious career. I will also be doing some classes on Beethoven. And we've got uh, Rob Cohen, who will be looking at the historical recordings. I get a lot of inspiration from the recordings of Schnabel and Kempf and all these giants of the earlier part of the 20th century. And it'll be lovely to see how their interpretations compare with more recent approaches to his music. On the 5th of June, we're celebrating the environment and we are performing the Pastoral Symphony, as indeed other orchestras will be doing the same across the world to raise awareness of the huge problems Mother Earth faces. There's something about Beethoven's music that lifts the spirit. Remember, he's the one who went deaf. That's the one thing everybody knows about Beethoven. He's the one who went deaf. And yet look what he was able to achieve. And if there's any message in his music, I believe it is that if I can overcome the greatest disability that can befall a musician, then by listening to my music, it will help you overcome whatever you face in your life. When we see the wellspring of determination and resilience and bravery and despair and hope and love and just refusal to give in, that all this stuff comes from, it really becomes the, the greatest music on earth. The musical experience in the Sheldonian is unique because you can just put your arm out and almost touch the players performing and you're constantly enveloped by the sound. I think we, we tend to revere Beethoven, we bow down before him, we worship this greatest of all composers. And actually he was also the most human and the greatest hearted and the most intelligent of people. I spend hours on the piano practicing and studying the scores in order to somehow capture what he wants to say and find ways of discovering the essence of the music and the spirit. We invite you to come and listen to what we might say. We will try as best as we can to put across our ideas and a knowledge and experience of what has gone on before. I hope you'll gain as much pleasure from listening to our performances as we will by performing them. Thank you.